We need a new brush. Yeah, nonsense. That's a marvellous old brush, that. I've had that for 14 years. That's only had two new heads and three new handles. <laughs> 93 million miles to the sun. That's about how many miles this brush has done and all. <laughs> When you consider what a tiny speck this planet is on the cosmic landscape, isn't it marvellous that the, the, the VAT man can find his way to my shop whenever he feels like it? <laughs> you can't fault my double-entry bookkeeping, but I still view his visits with a sense of four-four boding. Four-four boding? That's two fours. You mean eight boding. <laughs> I'm the, the double-entry talking now. You know, when old Blue Eyes sings about the wee small hours of the morning, it's obvious he never works in a shop. I know your sort. If I didn't hear that you out of bed of a morning, you'd be lying around there while gone seven. <laughs> it's marvellous, isn't it? Eh? When you think of the difference in lifestyle between somebody like me and Frank Sinatra. Ah, but uh, did he find tr true happiness? I don't know, but he had a good look in some interesting places, though, didn't he? <laughs> Ever gardener. Have a gardener. It's pronounced have a gardener. And we used to say, if you're going to have a gardener, she's the one to have all right. <laughs> oh, dear. Mind you, on second thoughts, you know. I'm still busy with my first thoughts. <laughs> hey, you. Before you let your mind wander, just make sure it's not too weak to be out on its own, will you? <laughs> you know, on second thoughts, I think she would be a kind of a woman who would be very expensive, you know. She wouldn't be satisfied with a packet of shop tights at cost, would she? Mm. No, not that lady. She would demand a, a crippling discount, she would. <laughs> <sighs> oh, did you see that? At the thought of the erosion into me profit margin, my fingers lost all sense of grip, did you know? <laughs> Pick them up, would you? Oh. Oh, see, what am I doing with my life, eh? Groveling around on the floor this time in the morning, picking up other gardener's tights. <laughs> Don't crease them. I'm never likely to, am I, eh? You know, when I think of the tights that's been through my fingers, it's about time I had one with a leg in it. <laughs> Granville, you're always the same you are of a morning, full of desperate talk. I reckon it's the, the fluoride they put in the toothpaste. You know? <laughs> I think it's imbalancing your hormones a bit. Or well, maybe you're not quite regular enough with your sh with your sh uh, sh <laughs> with your with your shaving. <laughs> My advice to you at times of stress is to always go and say, spit polish your boots. <laughs> hey, put the kettle on, would you? All right. You know you've been a constant worry to me, Granville, ever since you first went into a Y fronts. <laughs> the secret of an orderly life, in my opinion, is to always leave yourself relaxed around the premises. <laughs> yeah. Four, three, two, beige. <laughs> oh, dear, now, now look what you've made me do. Look at that. <laughs> I didn't do that. No, you he's, did it. He's gone clean through. Look, he's got a, a hole both sides. <laughs> That's the worst kind of a hole, you know, both sides. Look, I just passed them over. You put them straight on the spike. You interrupted me rhythm, didn't you? Eh, my filing system. You might know that anything I've got in my hand at a time like this goes straight on the spike. <laughs> Good job you're not in the medical profession, then, isn't it? <laughs> Oh, it's, it's bad enough having the VAT man come in this morning. Now I've got to try and re reduce a pair of tights. Hey, you can't sell that pair now. We don't know that, do we? Until we try. I wish you wouldn't adopt these uh, negative attitudes, Granville. I don't know where you get it from. Your mother never said no to anything. <laughs> I bet she wouldn't buy a pair of tights with holes in. Oh, she was always game for a bargain with, with my sister. If anyone knew how to get a bit knocked off, she did. <laughs> hey, hey, was she a smart dresser? Oh, yes, she liked her clothes, yeah. How did she do her hair? Usually with a little bit of bits of grass in the back. <laughs> no, you liked her, though, really, didn't you? She was kind and loving and generous. No sense at all. <laughs> oh, customer. Well, is he coming in, or isn't he? 
The suspense is killing me. It's amazing, you know, isn't it? You stock your shop with all kinds of imaginable luxuries and then still they don't dither on the doorstep. You'd be amazed at what they do on that doorstep. <laughs> I have to sweep it up. <laughs> he can't get in. He can't get in! You've left a bolt done up. Come on, what's the matter with you? He's gone now, he's gone. Go on, get after him, go on. Oh, no, you can't go and grab customers off the street. You can't if you don't hurry. Go on, get in there, I'll go. Lieutenant, this whole area is in a war zone. I want everybody in this zone down this bunker immediately. Hey, yes, I told you, I told you it wouldn't be a minute. What about me bus? I've got a bus to catch. All right, so don't worry, I'll get you out in time for that. There's a quick turnover in this shop. We don't allow loitering. I was just standing there at the bus stop. Yes, now, what is it going to be? Cigarettes or tobacco or what, sir? Half asleep, thinking about the wife's bad leg. Oh, bad leg. We've got the finest bad leg department in the area, sir. Now, where did I put it? <laughs> when all of a sudden I feel his hand on my shoulder and I'm being hauled round the corner into the lair of this mad grocer. You was hammering on the door, sir. Who was? You was. It wasn't me. I wouldn't dare. I've heard things about this place. Why do you think I tiptoe past this shop every morning? No, oh dear, we've gone and got caught the wrong one here. You want to be more careful? Yeah, I'm sorry, sir, but you see, being in this game as long as I have, all the male customers start to look alike to me. <laughs> Mind you, never forget a wallet. What are you doing? <laughs> Don't worry, sir. No harm done, no harm done. No harm done? You snatch a bloke from a bus stop, it's like a hijack. My God, I thought we were off to Cuba. Oh, well, I can only apologise, sir, and offer you this small token in compensation for any inconvenience caused, sir. What is it? Well, it says something for the wife's bad leg, sir. Elasticated bandage. Oh, that's very decent. It's a miracle. <laughs> it's an ingenious little device, sir. Can be worn on, on both legs, though preferably not at the same time. <laughs> Otherwise, the good lady might fall flat on her fur on her face. <laughs> Thank you very much. Not at all. My pleasure, sir. 65p. <laughs> you what? 65p. Surely that's a, that's a small amount to pay, sir, for the ease and comfort of a, of a loved one, eh? Uh, or even the wife, for that matter, sir. <laughs> uh, uh, would you like some liniment for her? No, I flame him wouldn't. Oh, thank you very much, sir. There's a... Get that pound in the till, Granville. Yes. 35p change. There we are, sir. One, two, three, and 35. I think I hear your bus coming, sir. Step this way, will you? There we go. Do call again, won't you, sir? You must be joking, sir. <laughs> <laughs> well, you certainly made his day. A crafty beggar. Tiptoeing past the shop every morning. I bet he'll go right round via Arnold Street in future. <laughs> it's your fault, you know. It's your wireless bla blaring away. That's why we, why we don't hear him tiptoeing past. I could have had him years ago. <laughs> And talking of years ago, are you going to get that pound in the till or not? I've earned that one, you know. Oh, no, no, not the till. No, it's vicious, that till. No, I, I didn't tackle the till till I got all my wits about oh, me. Oh, don't, don't, don't be sad. No, no, yeah. yeah. Come here. Yeah! <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Some of you rarely seeing us have supermarket shelf. <laughs> Keep your distance, Arkwright. How would you have fancy of a, a, a fun-filled fortnight in a sunny little corner of the room above my shop? <laughs> your old mouth and trousers. And they're not necessarily in that order. <laughs> Keep away! Don't start grappling in the street. <laughs> all right. Then they all know we're going to be married. Not all invited to the dress rehearsal. Well, what would you take for a swollen chest? More than you'd pay. 
If you really want to make yourself useful, my washing machine's on the blink. I've rang for the engineer. Oh, yeah, you don't need an engineer. I can I can uh, pop, pop round later with me bear, with me bear. You with... needn't pop round with your bear anything. <laughs> <laughs> with me bear, with me bear's tool kit. I wish you'd let me finish sometime. Look, the best thing you can do is let me borrow your washer if I need it. Ah, uh, well... What do you mean? Ah, well, I'll pay for the electricity. No, no it's not that. You must be slipping, Arkwright. I can't charge you for the electricity. That's very flattering coming from you. Who's getting soft in his old age? Why can't you charge me for the electricity? Because me my washing machine's not electric. <laughs> <laughs> Tight old devil. What kind of appliances have you got in here? Well, I haven't got the... Oh, dear. Hey, what's up with the nurse? Oh, you've, you've noticed, have you? She's not in a playful mood this morning. Isn't it typical, eh? The first time I get her inside my private quarters, she turns out not to be in a playful mood. <laughs> oh, well, what can I give her? What have I got to, to, to tempt her with? Well, I don't know. How much are you prepared to spend? Oh, practically anything. Practically anything. Oh. Under a pound. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, it's not the money that counts, it's the thought, isn't it? How come you never think of anything worth more than a pound? <laughs> Honestly. Honestly, I'd lavish any amount of gifts on any female person I was engaged to. She could have the lot if I had the wherewithal. Hey, you keep your wherewithal in your pocket, you. <laughs> I've seen you sneaking out of an evening covered in solid brilliantine, looking for somewhere to lose your wherewithal. <laughs> Look at me. I'm stuck here slicing bacon and my life is trickling away. I don't suppose I shall ever be cited in a divorce case. It'll be short-sighted if you are. <laughs> you know, I'll lie awake at night wondering what WX really means in practical terms. You won't let me hair grow. I've never worn an earring. I suppose the only way I'll get grass stains on my jeans is by watching flaming cricket. I thought you liked the cricket. Yeah, not as much as girls. No, I used to like cricket before I went swimming and saw Deirdre Watson's navel. <laughs> <laughs> that were a revelation to me, that was. I've never seen anything quite as beautiful. I never realised that somebody could fall in love with somebody else's navel. I was thinking about it all the time they were giving me artificial respiration. <laughs> Here, I've got it. This hmm? is just the thing. Here, look. A pair of tights. What woman would say no to an extra pair of tights? That's the pair you stuck on the spice. Keep your voice down. Well, well they've got a hole in. We do, don't know they've got a hole in, do we? <laughs> However, if she gets them on and she finds they have got a hole in, I'm willing to re-examine the entire situation. <laughs> Just my look of it's round her flaming ankle. <laughs> oh, uh, hello, my love. Don't you love me? Oh, that's a, a terrible standing order to give an engaged person. <laughs> I must be mad getting tied up with you. If you think you're marrying me into a kitchen like that, you've got another thing coming. Well, what, what's wrong with me kitchen? Look at him. He doesn't even know. It's like the Black Museum in there. You haven't a modern appliance in the place. Oh, there's the gear, 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 gas, paper, paper, poker. <laughs> God, in the age of the microchip, Arkwright still running on steam. Listen, you better marry me, Gladys Emmanuel, before I run out of steam. I'm not marrying you, Arkwright, till you drag this place into the 20th century. <laughs> How do you manage to do your laundry every week with clapped out stuff like that? Well, it's easy. How can it be easy? He does it. <laughs> oh, the poor lad. You must be a blight on his adolescence. Mm. Hey! <laughs> Go Granville, Go come out of there at once. You leave him alone. Alone? He's not alone, is he? He's got two friends in there with him, hasn't he? Oh, poor lad. Look, he'll be going uh, dizzy with pleasure in there. Come on. <laughs> I'm not sure he can breathe. I can breathe, I can breathe. <laughs> Well, you don't talk with your mouth full. Come on, Alan. <laughs> Listen, oh, look, he's gone all unnecessary around the jeans now. Look. I've got patience to see, but by the time I get back here, Arkwright, I want to see a brand new washing machine in that kitchen. Uh, uh, brand new? Brand new. None of your tatty old bargains and a spin dryer. A spin it at all. <laughs> no, I can't, I can't do that today. I've got the VAT man coming. To, and, to, and tomorrow I'll be, wa be washing my hair. I, uh, oh, dear, dear. If it's not with one thing, it's another. And how much is a new washing machine? No, no. Not surprised going around with your head stuck in people's bosoms. <laughs> I couldn't help it. It doesn't need any help, does it? 
<laughs> he's doing perfectly well on his own, thank you very much. That bosom is between the tattoo of it. Oh, look. Oh, look at that. There's, there's something vaguely clinical, isn't there, about a state-registered leg climbing into a Morris Minor? Oh, Greg Granville, fetch your cloth, will you? Oh. Oh, look at it. Take your time, Mavis. We can't rush a decision like this. Large loaf or small. <laughs> I'll have a large sliced loaf. Large sliced loaf. No. No, I'll take a small one. That'll do nicely for us two. Unless his mother comes at supper time. <laughs> And before we've decided over well, what's for tea, it already is supper time. It's the same at our house, Mr. Arkwright. Oh, really? <laughs> I'll have a tin of beans. Tin of beans, right. Ah, now then. <laughs> Large or small? Haven't you anything in between? <laughs> Only a couple of thumbs at the moment. <laughs> small. That'll be 41p. There we are. A large loaf and a tin of beans. You certainly know how to plan a meal, Mavis. <laughs> Thank you very much indeed. Now, there's nine. There we are. Oh, here comes our friendly neighbourhood VAT man. Excuse me, Mavis. Good morning, sir. Damn dogs. Oh, dear, dear, dear. You certainly seem to have got you for 15% of that lot, haven't you? <laughs> Well, it doesn't smell too fresh to me. <laughs> it ought to be kept on a leash. Oh, that's what I always say. Yes, and the dog, too, preferably. Yes. <laughs> Why don't you go through uh, to the warehouse, Mr O'Reilly, and I'll come and see you later. Right, Mavis, I shall just leave you there, deciding uh, whether or not to leave the shop, all right? <laughs> right, here we are, Mr O'Connor, there we are. Snug as a bug in a rug here. Mind you, I uh, I wouldn't uh, stay here very long if I were you, all right? Well, we have our job to do. Oh, yes, I understand that. I only mention that on the count of the mice, you see. Mice? Yeah. You've got mice? Uh, well, uh, no, not officially. No, I can't show you a receipt for them. <laughs> <laughs> and from time to time, a little grey chap pokes his head out from under that case there. Little? How little? Teeth like an alligator. <laughs> Oh, dear, dear, dear. Whew. I'd like to have known my father. Yes. So, so would your mother. <laughs> You'd have thought with her being your sister that she might have told you something about him. Look at the pepper ice of this one. God, he is terrible, is that? But in my young day, I could have bought a whole of a washerwoman for that. <laughs> a big one. <laughs> I wonder how tall my father was. 
Do you think he was Hungarian? Well, there were quite a few about at the time, you know. And among your mother's last effects, I did stumble across a jar of paprika. Oh. <laughs> I always see him with a moustache. No, no, that was your mother. <laughs> Mind you, I'll say one thing about her. She certainly knew how to enjoy life without a, a, a flaming washing machine. Look at the price. That's 222... 222 per pound. 222 per P. I'm not paying that. I can't even say it. You'll have to get one. The nurse will be watching. <coughs> Listen, stay here and uh, look after the shop, will you? And keep your eye on that VAT man. If he starts asking any nasty questions, just say you know Comprendi. Tell him your father was a Hungarian. <laughs> hey, do you think he was? Well, he certainly dropped a goulash with your mother, didn't he? <laughs> Right. It's me, Nin Neville. Just window shopping, are you? I am at these uh, prices. <laughs> You're a hard man to bargain with, Arkwright. You can't win them all, Neville. Look, I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll give you a pound in your hand just to take your custom to another shop. Oh, Neville, where's your sense of adventure? <laughs> I am looking for a new washing machine. A new one? You? Aye, big and glossy and a new to be delivered immediately. Oh, well, in that case, sir, uh, come inside. Come inside. <laughs> to be delivered immediately? Aye, huh? immediately. Only delivered, mind. You needn't think I'm going to buy one at this sort of man. <laughs> I might have known. You could just want it delivered, you see, in, in full view of the street. We take it in carefully through the shop door and then we'll whip it out through the back. <laughs> you sneak round the side and then pick it up again. In return for which, I'm about to undertake something more modest in the reconditioned line. What? A second-hand one, you can custard. <laughs> hey, what are you doing? Shh, keep your voice down. It's a little device I've got for the VAT man. If I give a sharp tug on this string, something runs over his foot. <laughs> Unfortunately, it's, it's not a lorry, but he'll have to do. <laughs> so what are you sitting there for? You're well, supposed to be watching out for Neville. We shall miss the nurse if you don't. Go on, get out oh, there. Boy. I can work. What about the carpet department at Lewis's? <laughs> Look, I've got a job to do here. Oh, well, you're in the best place there, old lad, you know. It, it's a veritable little snug in there. Something ran over my foot. Oh, well, that'll be Granville on the shop bike. He's a speedman. <laughs> it was a mouse. It felt like a mouse. Oh, really? But, but what colour? I don't know what colour. What difference does it make? You'll soon find out if it's that little grey beggar, I'll tell you. <laughs> Mind you, if it's one of the brown ones, it'll be all right. One of the brown ones? How many have you got? Well, I, I, I don't know exactly. I didn't realise I've got to itemise things as finely as that. <laughs> I hope Neville's coming. I hope Neville's coming. <laughs> oh. You're yeah, too early, Neville. She, she's not back yet. Go, go around the block again. Go on. <laughs> Where, where's that woman got to? What's the time? Mm -hmm. eh?
Listen, get down to Neville. After Neville, go and get yeah. it. He's in the lorry. Hey. On your bike. I don't want to know. <laughs> out, haven't you? It's me, me, me new appliance. <laughs> Listen, if you left your window open later on, I could probably pop up the ladder. No, you couldn't. And we could come to some arrangement about me old appliance. <laughs> that old thing? What makes you think that's of any earthly use? The best thing you can do with that is paint it a suitable colour and stick a plant in it. <laughs> Right, to me now again. Right, right. Oh, right. Look, I can't keep on being interrupted like this. No, we haven't quite, quite finished yet, Mr O'Connor. We've got to take it out again. Out again? Yes, out again, yes. Excuse me, lads. Come on, straight out the back door now. Go on. Listen, as soon as you've dumped that, get in the real stuff, will you? I'll put a, I'll put a good, strong motor in the spin dryer. It uh, vibrates a bit, but if you lean on it, it'll be all right. <laughs> That's what I'm always telling Granville. <laughs> How's it going, Granville? Water's hot. I'm going to switch it on now. Right. <laughs> well, that, that doesn't sound too bad, does it? Why don't you try the spin dryer now? Hey. Spin dryer. Spin dryer, right. firelighters but then what can you expect at my age <laughs> I wonder if our Granville is Hungarian that was some weird language he was muttering whilst fumbling with the knots in his best shirt <laughs> <laughs> they don't know they're born at his age I never had a best shirt People used to live two or three to a shirt in them days. <laughs> 